how I got into wildlife photography was I was a kid, and uh, I, my dad always took pictures. He still takes pictures. He's 80 years old, and they gave me a little, I don't know, brownie camera or something. The one kind that you had to look into the top of it, and I started shooting with that. And I shot with that for a while, and uh, then when I uh, turned 21, I went out and got my own Minolta camera. And I started shooting with that, and one thing led to another, and then I was painting, oil painting, uh, all at the same time, and I was gonna pursue a painting career. But all the while, I took pictures and used those for reference in uh, my painting. And then I did pretty well in the painting. I got in galleries all over the Western United States, and, um, but after a lot of years of that, one day I was sitting at my easel and said, that's enough. I don't wanna do this anymore. I want to do, be a professional photographer. I submitted my first image to uh, really Colorado Outdoors and Wayne Lewis was the new editor there. He said, Vic, I like your stuff. We got one published, then we got another published. And then from there it started going to other magazines, other entities. And after basically three and a half years now, it's uh, chugging right along. The thing that inspires me about wildlife photography, I love being with animals. There's something about being with a wild animal that is so incredible. I think it's better than being with people, actually. People don't realize this, but when you're with animals all day long, they have distinct personalities. I People think I'm insane, but I talk to the animals when I photograph. And they respond. They truly do. I just wrote an article on that today. And I've asked animals to go to certain places in a scene, and they do it. It's the weirdest thing, but they do. And uh, it's something magical that happens between myself and the animals. And as I get more and more into this photography over the years, those magical moments come more and more and more. I think the animals trust you. They sense the body movement that you're not there to hurt them. Um, if you talk in a low, just calming, reassuring voice, they are curious about us. Animals are as curious about us as we are them. And I've had animals walk up to me. I had a, uh, a fox, I was working in a fox den for about a month, and it got to the point that when I would drive up, the, the vixen would come out and meet me and then walk me to her den. It's something that's really unique. I think that you have to spend that hours and hours, thousands of hours in the field to develop that. And then sometimes you're with actually the same animal over a month or two. People don't realize that you develop a trust and the animal develops a trust of you because sometimes it's scary for me. You're in danger at points in time, you really are. People don't realize that it's, it's a, a dangerous undertaking at times. You have to get in a little closer uh, because some of the people desire those pictures. Moose, for instance, they're a dangerous animal. I see some photographers get in there within 15 or 20 yards of a moose, and I'm thinking, you are absolutely nuts. These things can turn on you in an instant. Uh, so there's that inspiration, there's that, it's a adrenaline surge at times that, God, I might be pushing it just a little bit here to get that, that picture that nobody else is gonna get, but I gotta be really careful. On the other hand, there's a reverence for the animals. One of my most memorable times photographing wildlife is the ones I haven't had yet. But, I mean, they, I'm always anticipating. That's what makes it so exciting, is you never know what's coming next. Uh, I do a lot of elk photography, a lot. And I always wonder, what more could I photograph when it comes to an elk? And I was thinking about that last year, but I had imagined this one picture, that I would get this huge bull, I mean, ginormous, and that he would get into this willow patch, and that he would thrash his antlers, and he would then lift up, and his whole, all of his antlers would be covered in these willows. Well, lo and behold, I have pictured that shot and I was photographing this big bull. He walks down this big patch of willows. He just rubs around there, lifts his head. It's like perfect shot and he bugles. And I was ready for it. So I actually got about 12, 13 pictures of that. And he was at close range. I probably shot that within 20 yards. I guess it was scary, but it was so incredible at the same time. So that would be one of my most memorable times. There was a bighorn sheep that it was a really cold day up in the 
Big Thompson Canyon, uh, 15, 20 below zero, and I saw this guy walking up on this ridge line. Well, most people aren't gonna get, get out of their car, much less hike up the Big Thompson Canyon. It's steep, and but I had to get this picture, and, and I walked up this ravine up the cliffs kind of there, and, and here he comes, and this light snow, and the sun is just starting to come through the clouds a little bit, and he turns, and he's ginormous and he just posed for me. It was another one of those just magical moments. He said, ah, oh, Vic, you're here. I was wondering what it was gonna take you to get here. And <laughs> I was the only guy there. I got those pictures. 10 minutes later, he was gone. I have never seen him again. I've looked for him and looked for him. I've never seen him. Let's see, being a wildlife photographer, it takes a lot of research. I don't know if it's as romantic as people think it really is. I mean, it's tremendous to be out there with in nature all day long, every day. And you would never get one complaint from me. It's not even like it's a job. Uh, you have to be passionate about it. You have to really study it. You really have to know the animals. You have to be comfortable out there. You have to be able to put in with really cold days when it's bone chilling and you're out there for 10 or 12 hours in a row. A lot of road time. Um, and a lot of time by yourself. People don't realize that this is not a real buddy buddy type of thing i mean i find other photographers out there and once in a while we go out together but there's a lot of lonely time out there you spend uh, i get up in the mornings if i'm going from the house i'll leave here three o'clock in the morning and i'll be up shooting at, at first light the summers are tougher because light comes up a lot earlier and i'll shoot all day long i'll shoot till it's dark come home load the pictures on my computer uh, free up my disk space and write out the next morning again. And it's like that for weeks at a time. Um, luckily I have some great woman that I live with and her son and they're really forgiving on that type of thing. And um, I don't know if people really can appreciate the time that it takes. I think they see a picture and they think, yeah, it's a beautiful picture. There are the people that really want to buy the prints and they put them on their walls. And I think they are the ones that appreciate it. The magazines themselves, um, I don't know. People go out there, I think sometimes they say, well, I'd like to find that critter out there and, and hunt them. Um, and I keep those secret. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's really, you have to be committed to being a wildlife photographer. And sometimes I think I should be committed for being a wildlife photographer. <laughs> to get a better image, get out early in the morning. There's one, uh, most amateur photographers, I, I never see them before eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning. They're just getting out of bed. And same in the evening. Some of the best shots come at twilight. So they, most people are already back to dinner at that point in time and, and they're not willing to spend that time. Patience is utmost important. That's the, the, the most of all. I've sat on an osprey nest for four days looking for one particular shot. And I don't know who really has, especially an amateur, has that patience to sit there for four days. But if they're a little patient and they'll wait that extra 15 or 20 minutes, animals usually give you something to shoot that's unique. If you'll just be quiet, you sit there and be patient with them. I think do a little research. If you're gonna go to the Tetons Think about what you're shooting, what the time of the year you're shooting, what the conditions are gonna be like. Uh, sometimes when they're playing their vacations, that's tough to do, but I look and see if there's a storm coming in. I like to shoot in adverse weather because it makes for, for pictures of animals versus the elements. I think it's more unique than having some animal sitting there grazing, oh, I got the great picture. Even if you're shooting with a little point and shoot, make sure it has a good zoom lens on it. Look for the catch light in an animal's eyes look for them doing something unique. It's the most amazing thing when you're up and there's, for instance, in Rocky Mountain National Park during the rut and there's 10 or 15 other photographers sitting around there and you have an elk and he goes down and he gets a, a chomp of grass and he comes and starts chewing you get click, 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 click. everybody's taking this picture. And it's like, why would you take that picture? I mean, that's, there's nothing unique about it. Wait till he jumps in the river or wait till he fights another elk or gets this big, weird looking face or something like that. That's what makes the picture. It's uniqueness that's, uh, that's, everybody else can be average, but you can't be when you're doing this for a living. Colorado is the greatest place, I think, in the world to shoot wildlife photos. There is such a diversity of 
scenery. There's such a diversity of wildlife in this state that I don't think the world offers anywhere. I've been to Africa. No, it doesn't hold a key to Colorado. You can go to the top of Mount Evans and be sitting next to mountain goats and photographing them, or you can be over in Telluride and there's great scenery or uh, great four-wheeling, um, tremendous flower photography in the in the Yankee Boy Basin, the, in the Governor's Basin and all those areas in, in July. You can go up on the Poudre Canyon and be uh, shooting moose up there. You can go drop down within 15, 20 minutes in these big parks. In North Park, there's bighorn sheep up there, huge mule deer out there. You can go in the prairies of Colorado and, and uh, have white-tailed deer out there. And then you have all the little critters, the weasels, the, the marmots, the, the pikas, they're all here. There's a reverence for being in nature. That this is, this is where we really belong. When people are in the cities all the time, they miss that totally. I guess I could get in my little uh, tree hugger thing there for just a second, but if we muck too much with this stuff, we're gonna be in trouble because we need that wildness in us. We need that wild, we have to have nature around us and if we get rid of it or, or damage it too much, we've really damaged ourselves.